Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Shelly and today I'm going to be talking you through and reviewing nine really beautiful picture books that I have read recently. So if you are new to my channel and you have not um, watched one of my picture book videos before. This is a regular se segment on my channel and sometimes I wonder like um, who watches <laughs> who watches these? So if you find yourself enjoying this video I would really really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up because it really helps encourage me to make videos like this overhead showing you beautiful illustrations and talking through truly gorgeous picture books. So I have um, nine here in front of me. Oh, and then I was gonna say, if you like this video and you're not yet subscribed and you want more videos like this, I would encourage you to subscribe and um, click the thumbs up button, again, because it's a gentle encouragement to me that you're enjoying this video. And without any further rambling on, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Right here on the screen, I think I have a little bit of every picture book that I'm about to talk, that I'm about to talk through, a little bit of each one, so you can get kind of a little tease of what each one might kind of offer or what's coming up. And the way I'm going to do it is I am going to talk about the book that I want to talk about first, like the book that I'm feeling most excited to talk about first. And I think that is... This one, the Uncorker of Ocean Bottles. The Uncorker of Ocean Bottles is written by Michelle Cuevas and it's illustrated by Aaron E. Steed. Aaron E. Steed, as an illustrator, has illustrated Sick Day for Mr. Amos, I believe. I know it says it in the back here. So, and has won or been honored for. Um, oh, Amos McGee has um, been honored with a Caldecott medal. So, uh, sick day for Amos, Amos McGee. Uh, immediately I saw this and I'm a huge fan of Steed's work. Um, and you'll see why in just a moment. I love the color palette. She's got gorgeous, a gorgeous color palette. A gorgeous sense of color, I should say. And this is no different. So when I saw this at the library, it called to me and I was so glad to pick it up. Something that you may not know about me, and I'll talk about it as I'm flipping through to the first okay, one of her illustrations. Her ability and attention to detail to the human face, Aaron, Aaron, our illustrator, her ability and attention to detail to the human face is just wonderful. And isn't that outfit fantastic and the red that's on his cap is echoed <laughs> with the red in his gloves and I love his outfit and I love his bicycle and I love the whole thing. Something I don't share about very often is my picture book reading. This year I have been keeping up with um, accounting for my picture book reading and I'll oh, see look at oh my goodness I'm getting I'm getting distracted. I'll just finish my thought and then I'll show, <laughs> show you a close-up of these characters, oh, mm, they're so good, um, is that I've read over, like well over a hundred picture books this year, and that's not, that's not necessarily the, the picture books that I'm reading to my children, they are picture books I'm reading because I love to read picture books, <laughs> so here is what I'm saying, is that there, look at that facial expression and that attention to detail. I love that her work looks very organic, as if as if she is hand sharpening a charcoal pencil and using a fine point to draw like those hair details. And then you'll go over to this little cat who's looking at the yarn ball and the yarn is bringing your eye back to our uncorker of ocean bottles who's kind of got these sad eyebrows. <laughs> and is looking longingly sort of out into the blankness. But what I was saying is that what I like about Erin E. Steed's work is that it looks like she has 
taken a, a paintbrush and stroked it across the page and it looks very organic and handmade and I really love that in art. So the Uncorker of Ocean Bottles. It's about this guy right here. Um, gosh, look at this sense of the page and the way that it draws your eye into the center and the house on the side and the details. Oh my gosh, the details. That little whale on the top of the house and there's the cat. And again, her sense of color, the red that matches the red of his cap his um what is it his uh, beanie or his his little his hat anyways the uncorker of ocean bottles is um about this this guy right here and how he is um supposed to he finds bottles like um, message in a bottles like m messages in bottles that are corked up and he delivers those messages to the people those messages belong to. And that is his job. Again, I just have to gush over um, Steed's sense of um, the use of the, the page itself. So we have this circle right here and how she has left this as like a blank, a blank space and it draws your eye in the very center, the, the center of this cir circle at least is that again, beautiful red. I mean, that rich, gorgeous red. I want a lipstick in that color. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, and it, this is on a rainy day. And then this is on a spring day. And the cat again. The uncorker of ocean bottles. He himself, the uncorker himself, is feeling lonely. Oh, we have the seasons, the four seasons. I didn't notice that before, but this is clearly fall um, and he's wearing his little fall outfit and this is winter. So, um, oh my gosh, I love this. So his job is to deliver these messages to, the, to whom they're supposed to be delivered to. Like, gracious me, look at the details in that face. Mm. The gramophone. And the use of color, this like splash of color on the page. And again, we have this circle, but it's the circle of a window. So what I was trying to say is that the uncorker is he find, he gets the letter, he tries to, he finds the person that the letter belongs to and he delivers it. And he finds that his job is really um, important. But he also has this dream that he gets a letter. He wants a letter. He wants a letter that's written to him. And he is, you know, feeling a bit lonely, um, all, all by his lonesome. Clearly he's not. He's got his pet cat. I really like that little detail. And so one day, isn't that awesome? This like um, overhead shot of our uncorker in his little canoe. Isn't that sweet? And again, you get this sense of texture on the page. Love that. So anyways, he finds a letter. It's a letter inviting the reader to the party. And so he doesn't know, or the receiver to the party, but he, he doesn't know, you know, who the receiver is. And so he goes on this little mission to find out who is this letter for? And so he, um, he meets the maker of cakes right there and the maker of cakes doesn't recognize, doesn't recognize, um, the handwriting. And so the uncorker moves on and then he meets a candy shop owner and a little girl and her mother and they say that you know they haven't it, the invitation is not for them and so they move on and then he meets a seagull a sailor and a one-man band and the letter is not for them either and so you know he doesn't know what to do 
and he, he falls asleep that night um, and he would like to you know apologize to the writer of the note because they he can't find who, deli who to deliver it to and that's what his job is all about so he decides to show up where the party is supposed to be at and lo and behold though all everyone else who read the letter and said it wasn't for them also showed up <laughs> to um to have a little party and um you know it's really sweet it's about them coming together oh my gosh again the details like look at those lights look at the lights little hanging stars for decorations like this book feels like somebody put a lot of love into it and you know that kind of idea of feeling alone and feeling like you're unsure of where you belong you know it's and then finding a place of belonging this has that message in it and it is so sweet <laughs> so sweet and such a gorgeous book oh my gracious look at that and then again it's so smart and then we get a circle one of these circles that we've seen over and over on the last page as our uncorker is, you know, walking back home. And that is it. The next book I have is one of the New York Times Best Illustrated Picture Books of either 2017 or 2018. And this is The Funeral by Matt James. I liked this book because it is talking, look at these beautiful blue, cobalt blue almost, end papers. I like that it's talking about a, um, a, a topic that I think sometimes some adults feel is too heavy for children. And it's about going to a funeral and what that means and it's doing it from the perspective of a little girl named Norma, you know, Norma's not going to school that day and it doesn't, you know, it's showing sadness and she's um, just contemplating what this day is going to mean and who she's going to see at this funeral. And it's interesting because it's told in this childlike way. Um, because funeral has the word fun in it she points that out and you know she's just experiencing a funeral for the first time and I quite like this so there's observations like black cars um, moving slowly through town Norma gets to see her cousin Ray at the funeral and her mother's putting Kleenexes in her purse and they're gonna go inside of the church they are sitting sitting in the church this is something i would do i would give my kid a stuffed animal um, during the service to try and make sure they behaved throughout she does some things like smell inside of her mother's purse you know and they talk about the deceased uncle frank who's recently died playing music at the funeral, having refreshments and a table that honors the um, aforementioned uncle who is now passed, and also being able to go outside and like hang out with a, f a family member that one may have not have seen in a really long time. And so here Norma is with her cousin. Again, you have like this organic quality. This color palette isn't perfectly to aligned with my favorite things so you know it's not like um it's not something that I'm like ooh ah but I can appreciate it and I can appreciate the colors splashed all over the page and the sense that we're really far away and there's Norma running and there's her cousin running um, even if it's not my most favorite color palette so to speak um and she gets to play with her cousin. Doesn't that look like a lot of fun? Oh, to have that energy again. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is great. And then after they're done, they, you know, they go back to where the funeral is. 
and she reflects on the funeral as they leave and she says that she liked it and that you know overall it's this kind of, this idea that a funeral even though you're coming together for sad circumstances and there is sadness and a lot of tradition or going about it and, and surrounded um, by this event that it can be a really you know illuminating and um, one of the circumstances that doesn't have to be sad and it can be one of those um, memory making experiences. So I've definitely gone to funerals where I have just been so grateful to spend time with people that I love and that's what stands out um, just as much as honoring the memory of that those who have just passed. So yeah, The Funeral by Matt James. All right, next I have My Island by Stephanie Damasse Portier and Sen Swan Ratatavan. Ratatavan. My Island. So this is one of those books where I really love the illustrations, even if the story is a little bit less strong. But my gosh, look at these end papers. Isn't that beautiful? So My Island is about a little girl that creates a space of her own. I really love the red circle that is on her cheek and the sculptural design of her hair and the expression and the little detail of the red on her nose and mm, it's so it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And <laughs> It's about, essentially, loosely, about creating a space that makes you feel safe and um, that has beautiful things on it. So she has birds on her island, um, animals, snails. You can see these large, large snails at her feet. This is one of my favorite kinds of color palettes, like this. Um, beautiful muted yellow, beautiful muted red, and this like turquoise color. It's so pretty. Um, she talks about having her friends <laughs> over for lunch, and her friends are these animals. And she's in this like, she's this small scale, almost like doll like figure because she's in a lunchbox. And here are the utensils, which is again something I really like and was delighted by. Then there's little things like the bunny hanging on the clothesline. Oh, so cute little teapot that is tied to the ladder and a snail crawling on the clothesline. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is one of those books I just, mm, I'd like to frame somewhere. Like I would like to frame this two page spread and hang it on my walls because it's so pretty. And she talks about living in this house and arranging flowers. And in this house, she feels at home. And that's really cool. And again, it's like a, this scale thing. She's almost like this doll, but it never mentions it, never says what she is or, um, or anything like that. But you have these little bright red cheeks and um, she does the things that she loves in the space that she feels at home in, like singing. And she likes to share what she has. They're eating clouds. <laughs> And she herself has like, she's like the size of a doll and she's playing with like a little doll house. And I think it's, I think what this is supposed to be is that she's an actual little girl, but this is the home, like her doll house home, which she dreams. It's just not this, the clearest. Um, and you know, now she's inside her doll house uh, as her imagination would take her there kind of thing. Um, and again, it's just such a, just that she's hanging little snow, like snowflakes from a cloud. I mean, it's just so cute and whimsical. Um, but in one that I just, I love the color palette. And again, gorgeous end papers. All right, then now we have this, um, the King of the Sky. This is another one of those best illustrated children's books from the New York Times back in 2017. This is written by Nicola, Nicola Davies and it's illustrated by Laura Carlin. This, the, 
the illustrations are great. It's a moody book and a moody illustrations to match. So, oh gracious me. Just, oh, my heart pitter patters at this, these end papers. They're so beautiful. <laughs> and these colors. And you're getting these textures of um, paint that was wet and that has dried on the page. So, or very organic looking. And I love that. I love that so much. So this is the story of some a, a little boy who has moved somewhere um, to 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 the city with uh, a different language than he's used to. So you get oh my gosh, like the texture. This texture, isn't that not just beautiful? It's just so good. It's so good, y'all. Okay, so two page spread of the city. It's very, um, <laughs> it's very gray. And this is our little boy. And he, he does not feel like he belongs. Again, like this, this moody, emotional depth that you see also echoed in the pages. You see this emotional echoing because this little boy notices these pigeons in the loft behind his house. And it's Mr. Evans's pigeons. And Mr. Evans is an old man. And, you know, we're, we're figuring out who he is as our protagonist is also figuring out who he is and he actually come to find out that he trains pigeons and he spent a his entire life um, working in a coal mine I really love intergen like intergenerational friendships and this is what we see here and he says that he trains pigeons to to race he has racing pigeons and you know they, they cook up this plan where <laughs> they're, they're gonna train a pigeon together and you know he shows him how he does it and some of the principles behind training a pigeon and the mood of the pages gets quite lighter even though you know that part of the history of pigeons and carrier pigeons is that they were messengers for war. So it's a book that doesn't shy away from emotional heaviness in the least. Race day dawned, he puts his pigeon in a basket and sends the pigeon away. And, you know, he's, the little boy is nervous about it. And of course, during race day, there's terrible weather. And it gives us a sense of, you know, a tension, tension there, of whether the pigeon is going to come back. And here we see our pigeon, supposedly, <laughs> in the air. And what do you know? Two days later, um, nothing happens. We're still waiting. Here's our presumed pigeon here. And then, you would not believe it, but <laughs> the pigeon finally, finally comes back and he is, you know, the hero pigeon and a champion and they declare him king of the pigeons. And um, it's, it is a really delightful story. The illustrations are incredibly unique and it's about finding home ultimately it's about finding home even when you are far away and how to find how to like find your way back and I just loved it it's a really it's a really beautiful book here is another one <laughs> I need something a little bit lighter so we're gonna do this one run wild I believe this is uh, another one of the New York Times best illustrated picture books of 2017 and um, yeah so this is this is great because I believe it's told in iambic pentameter and this is by David Cobble wait let's go back the end papers y'all mm. children's books know how to do some beautiful end papers 
So yeah, run wild. So it says, hey you, sky's blue, don't forget shoes. Open that door and sprout. You're out, chase the wind, you can grab it. So the language in this book is so super fun, light, airy, has a rhythm to it rhymes and it matches the silly and fun silliness and fun <laughs> and the fun this book brings like this book is about being free and wild and you know getting dirt and worms on your toes maybe i don't know if i would like that nowadays but as a kid I would, um i would probably have i don't know if i would have liked it as a kid one of my sons who's a little more carefree than i am would love that he would just he likes to look at creatures and um he's very observant and it's about like getting outside and seeing the sun. And so this is just like everything about this book is light and fun and brings the joy of reading. I mean, I love that it's like hot, hot, burning sand. And then here we have a little, a little person like on fire, <laughs> so it seems. And again, you have that organicness of the paint on the page, like it dried just like that. like there was this saturation um, in the center and then it kind of bleeds out and gets lighter and fades almost into the page right here. And so, and the same thing with this, it's like a single brush stroke um, seemingly and that it was just had this more saturated line going through and that this came afterwards once the shape of the blue on the paper appeared first. You can even see the brush strokes right here. And of course, this is water. It's um, mimicking water. Again, this, it's just like, they have these big old brushes and they're holding it and the brush is huge. And you know, they're taking, um, I guess, this is, what is it? David Covell is taking his paintbrush and just <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's far more technical than my sound effects, but that's the idea that you get that there's this fluidity. There's this fluidity and this practiceness in order to get these organic shapes that mimic the water. And then we have two different textures. We have paint texture and then we have crayon. This looks like crayon almost right there. So, and actually we look like we almost have like a dark colored pencil or charcoal so you have three textures so I like that um, our illustrator is playing with textures mm. again you have this like sense that you can almost see it in your mind's eye the way that um, Covell just took a paintbrush and moved it across the page love that everything about this book is fun and then it's fun too that like the words mimic what's going on or the, the art mimics the words on the page and you know crash boom thunder and then it's the first gray page that we've gotten and that he needs to you know our little runner our carefree <laughs> our carefree runner needs to be careful and not um trip over rot rotten stumps Oh no, and then it's ugh, it's slug. I mean, all about this book is just so delightful, so fun. Are you gonna keep going? I think so. And, you know, then it's like we get up, and we keep going, we keep running <laughs> from day until night. In that back here, we have the sun setting, and then the moon rising. Moon's gonna smile, run, run, wild, wild. And then we have again our end papers, which are just gorgeous. I love that. This is very much like a book about a childhood in which you spend the entire day outside. Another emotionally hard hitting book and it's Ocean Meets Sky. This is by the Fan Brothers and this is, let's see, did they, oh yeah look at this. Oh, just, you see that whale? Looks like clouds. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. So this is the story of Finn, who is right here. The Fan Brothers are just so whimsical. Everything about their books are so, 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 so whimsical. And it is about this little boy, Finn, who um, is interested in the space where the ocean meets the sky. So there he is, and there's his grandfather. This is 
a conversation he had with his grandfather and it says his grandfather would have been 90 years old today so Finn builds a, a boat one that he had planned to to do with his grandfather and he he decides to embark on a journey which is the journey has begun oh my gosh it's so beautiful um, a journey in which he is wondering where does the the sea and where did the sea and sky meet and on this way he f sees this great golden fish I mean look at the design of this guy mm. and that color oh, that color y'all is he not just fantastic mm. all right um, so anyways, you know, he goes on this journey about the scale of it all, like his little boat. Is that boat not precious? <laughs> like, is that not precious? Oh, and his flag is like a, a bag or his shirt, I think a shirt. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so just, <laughs> I'm just gonna stop. Huh. But, um, so, you know, he's like, where, where does the where does the ocean and sky meet? Where does the ocean meet the sky, basically? And um, <laughs> he goes, this is Library Islands. Oh my gosh, and you get to see the sky, Library Islands. And these just so whimsical, these characters. Um, where, a hundred bo where a hundred bookish birds were roosting. Oh, look, I've spotted Moby Dick. Again, it's just like these little things. The Odyssey, Carousel Horse, Moby Dick. Anyways, you just gotta love that. Gotta love that. Little literature references in there. They explore some giant seashells. So again, for scale, it's just like, there he is. There he is. Just adds to the whimsy of it all, right? And they cross the sea where there is moon jellies dancing. These are, oh gosh, so beautiful. And then he finds this magical place um, and he wonders, is this where the ocean meets the sky? And then his whimsical, beautiful boat turns into something that flies. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Oh, I love it. This is just makes, it brings out the childishness in me. Mm, look at this great, this great whale. I get such, such a, a whimsical way to do scale. Just these large creatures, those large shells, and then you have his little boat. other floating boats. I mean, just pure magic. It reminds me a little bit of Peter Pan, but also just not because it's just so magical. And ultimately, um, he finds closure with his grandfather who had passed and, um, you know, was able to make peace with that. And so, even though it's this super whimsical book, it also has this sense of emotional depth that is just wonderful and very sweet. And, you know, he he's, in a sense, like at the end of it all, made peace with, with that. And, um, you know, you get the grandfather's face and the moon at the end. So sweet, oh my gosh, I love it so much. Such a good book. All right, next I have Eric by Sean Tan. Sean Tan, Sean Tan is most known for his book, The Arrival, which is a wordless graphic novel about um, immig the immigration process. And so Eric, this is has words in it. How whimsical. I read this to my children this morning. I don't read them all the books that I end up reading. It just, sometimes they don't like the same things I like. So Eric, just these end papers y'all okay it's so cute Eric is a an exchange student and he's very teeny tiny <laughs> and his family the exchange family that he's spending time with you know he they just figure it's a cultural thing that he wants to spend all of his time all Eric wants to spend all of his time in the kitchen pantry 
and he is, you know, he's very curious, very inquisitive. Um, I just love this. It's just this little, you get a real sense of what this little creature is like and that shadow, y'all, that shadow right there. I don't know, it just adds so much. So, um, you know, he, um, Eric, this little guy, he ends up asking questions that are difficult to answer. Like, is the drain, you know, is it a flower or you know, what goes under a postage stamp? Um, so yeah, it's just so cute. They go on adventures. And he gets to kind of look around and see what other parts of you know the city is like, what the other parts are like. And he ends up finding little trinkets. Um, even in the last page too, he finds these, these little things on the ground. And then one day he just gets on his little, his little leaf flower airplane flying contraption and heads on home. And <laughs> it, took, it takes the family a minute to realize that he's gone. But um, they find something really spectacular. I like that there's like this moment of anticipation where they're just words. They say that they've they've left their pantry the way that it is because they show future guests um, what it looks like and how special it is. And so you have this moment of like, well, what are you talking about? How special is it? Which I think is just smart writing. And here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh. I love it so much. <laughs> it's just so great. And so this is, you know, this is what um, Eric had been doing in the kitchen cupboard, creating like a little magical garden, a little mini magical garden, which is just mm, so cute. And um, a note reassuring his host family that he had a wonderful time. And um, that's it. It's just in the beautiful end papers again. And just the delight that this was is so good. Next I have My Red Hat by Rachel Stubbs. I, <laughs> I like this book a lot. It's very, it's very cute. Um, so I think, again, I really, I just love a pop of red in a color, in a picture book. This is about a red hat given to a young person from an older person. It could be from a grandparent to a grandchild or one of those intergenerational friendships that form and you, it's everything you could do with a red hat. Um, paint it, do silly things with it, um, or necessary things like giving your dog a drink, which I think is cute. Um, it helps you stand out in the crowd. I love this like gray slate tone and the pop of a red hat. Um, or not, you know, so sometimes you stand out in the crowd or sometimes it's in vogue <laughs> to have a hat. Uh, a hat holds dreams. A little cheesy, a little on the sweet side for me, but, or hides secrets. Um, but ultimately it has this like lighthearted fun to it or covers fears. Um, but I like just, I like the, um, I, what is it? Like the the what is it called it, it'll come to me i like this variation on the theme that's what i was trying to say i like this variation on the theme in that we are just um you know thinking about this hat and all the things and the little adventures and i like the depiction of an older person and a younger person having a great time together and having little adventures together and they're not like massive insane over the top wild adventures they're just sweet and fun and like caring and so i just thought this was a very sweet very sweet book um and i really enjoyed it all right this is my last book floret and this is by anna walker yet another um oh, again pages mm, mm. oh y'all <laughs> This is uh, by Ann Walker, and it's another one of the 2017 best pic best illustrated picture books, according to the New York Times. So, here is the family, 
and they are clearly moving. And this is May, and their family is moving to a city. Um, and May's mother, which is, I love this by the way, the color palette, the muted tones, like the organic quality to some of the roof, the roofs, like the rooftops, like that right there. Um, I love it so much. So she wants to build, she wants to build a garden. Um, May wants a garden and her mother says that they'll eventually get a garden and the city is very different than what May is used to. For example, you know, you're not even supposed to like walk on the grass. You're not even allowed to walk on it. You can just look at it. And she notices how, um, or she draws her own garden. Like that's how much she misses it. What's interesting is that she reminds me of what my older son who really loves nature. And it's one of the things that he enjoys. Um, independent of myself and my husband, we don't, I mean, he, we encourage it and we are supportive of it, but we're not super nature -y people. And so it's sweet that he himself will just kind of look at outside and appreciate it. And so she reminds me of my own son. And, um, you know, but like, even though she drew her own garden, it gets washed away by the rain. And so instead she sets up a picnic very very cute like look how cute that is and you get the sense that she's really she's really missing her garden she draws it leaves flowers um bugs <laughs> love a girl that loves a bug look at that she draws a bug different bugs on the boxes and you just get the sense that she's really missing nature. Um, something that she had access to that she no longer has access to. And, you know, she looks for a garden. She's looking for it. <laughs> and, she, you know, she ends up finding it. She ends up finding something that can give her the green that she is looking for and the life that she is looking for but the forest is closed <laughs> so she's you know she waits and waits um and she wants to get in and she notices a little green sprout i'll show you she notices a little a little green sprout growing in between the cracks on the cement and um so then she says that she has a piece of forest and she's very happy about it. She's carrying it all around. I also like this idea of like walking. It, my kids, whenever they see things like this on a book, they'll run their finger across it and see, you know, who, like, who was that following? Is that the bicycle or is that the mom or is that May? Like whose path is that? So I like those little details. She takes the treasure home and puts it on her window seal. And she, you know, puts it in a small jar and it's a great place for the plant to grow. And eventually she does end up getting a garden. So even though the forest was closed in the city, which I think is pretty great. And then you get a sense of bringing some nature and some light to the previously, and life rather, to the previously pretty slated and gray city. And like how to have a garden in a city. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that just beautiful? Mm. I love that celebration of nature and being innovative in our desires and being creative with what you have and not giving up on your dreams in a little, in a small way. I'm probably making it cheesier than the book actually was. So, oops, and then the end papers yet again. Beautiful. I think I have, hmm, I think I have two favorites. I really like these two. Eric by Sean Tan and the Encorker of Ocean Bottles by Michelle Cuevas, Cuevas? Cuevas, I think, or Suevas, and Erin Eastead, and I also really like 
like the next bracket down I think. The next bracket down would be these these four books. So the King of the Sky. This would be like the next tier. Floret, Run Wild, and Ocean Meet Sky. And then the three that are probably ranked at the bottom, but it's hard to rank and it's based on my mood, would be My Red Hat, probably because it doesn't have the strongest story, even though I really liked the variation on the theme, like what you can do with a red hat. My Island, similar similar to um, the idea of like just not having a super strong story, which I feel like you need with picture books. And then My Funeral has a really strong story and a really strong concept. It's a fun oral funeral, um, but the art is not really to my specific taste. Uh, but yeah, all are great, all are wonderful. So anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for, for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get all the books in frame. And yeah, I'll see you all at my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.